Go for it. Lun addiction just doesn't affect you, but others around you. Hi. Hi, Benjamin. Tell us about the last time you tried to communicate with others. It was bad, Carl. No one understood me. It, it was like I was speaking a completely different language. Hey, Ben. We need two terabytes to spin up a thousand VMs for a test we're running tomorrow. Two terabytes? A thousand VMs today? Are you out of your mind? I will be manually tuning storage and reshuffling VMs all night again. Uh, two terabytes. Okay, I can do that. Uh, tier zero, tier one, raid. What raid level are you looking for? I don't know, man. I just need two terabytes. Uh, reads or writes sequential to random. What about stripe with? Huh? Snap out of it. I just need two terabytes. Uh, <laughs> Benjamin, come back to me, buddy. I'm right here. I'm right here. And go. That was kind of my wake up call, you know? When I realized I was stuck. And now that you have Tintry? Well, everything is so much simpler. I'm thinking more clearly and communicating with my coworkers. I have friends. Ben, if I were to ask you to take two terabytes and spin them up to a thousand VMs, what would you say now? I'd say, consider it done, dude. Healthier storage, healthier relationships. I'm proud of you, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. Keep storage simple. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Chuck, and I used to have a problem with lungs, and I know I'm not alone, because um, with traditional storage, even if you don't know what a LUN or a volume is at the physical level, it's causing problems in your cloud because it's providing performance problems, things you're not even aware of. These are the unknown unknowns that are causing problems in your environment. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Tintry, what we do, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to hand it over to Chris, who's going to show you a demo of our integration with, with Cinder. But first, let's talk about Tintry. We sell storage appliances into enterprises, service providers, public cloud. And what I mean, mean by appliance is a physical storage array. So these are all uh, for you boxes um, with uh, SSDs and HDDs as a hybrid architecture. But our unique value is that we are VMware storage. We actually don't support physical workloads. Um, we're not designed for uh, being a filer. What we're designed for is to accelerate and provide performance to virtual machines. And we do that. Um, we started selling uh, the VM store in 2011 um, as a solution for vSphere um, virtualized environments. We've since um, added support for Hyper-V, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, which is Red Hat's KVM um, virtualization infrastructure. And today at the show um, and at our booth later on and on stage in a few moments, we're going to show you our integrations with OpenStack Cinder. We get a lot of questions um, at the booth, especially here at OpenStack. We are purely uh, primary storage for running virtual instances. So we are not an object or file storage solution. But because of our express purpose-built design, we have a lot of benefits um, to offer there. Now, this is something that enterprise companies experience a lot. And as a cloud user or a cloud architect, you may not have these direct discussions with the storage administration team. But Believe me, there are, there are issues that, that, are, that are happening there in terms of a simple requirement for 20 terabytes of storage to, to give to a cloud environment and OpenStack. On the storage side, the admins have questions about you know, how much do you really need? Um, what are the configurations that you require? What are the workloads going to look like? Um, 
You may hear things like raid levels or tier one or tier zero or stripe width or protection policies. These are all legacies of um, architectures that were designed for physical workloads, but they have real impacts on storage performance, storage predictability, storage scalability, even in a cloud environment. Now, Cinder and other, other uh, solutions in, in OpenStack are, are geared to try to, to hide some of that complexity from the, from the cloud user. But again, they still have real impacts on the performance of virtual machines and virtual instances running in any cloud, including an OpenStack cloud. And that's because fundamentally, most architectures for, for storage were designed 20 or 30 years ago with a one-to-one -one relationship in the physical data center between the server that was running the application and the LUN or volume that was holding the data. As we moved to virtualized environments, we took advantage of shared storage to provide vMotion and other abstraction benefits, but we ended up with something that some folks call the I.O. Blender, where a container that was designed for, to, to handle one application in the physical world is now running 20, 50, 100 VMs. They're uh, conflicting with each other. You're causing noisy neighbor effects. And what's really needed is a move to um, cloud. As, as you move to the cloud data center, VMware storage aligns the applications back to where they should be, which is storage that's fully aware of the virtualized environment. So in terms of where Tintree and OpenStack are today, um, Tintree supports OpenStack today with uh, VMware integrated OpenStack or VIO. Um, we also support um, OpenStack with the native NFS driver for Cinder. Um, and what we're going to be previewing today um, and releasing later this year is a Tintree driver for Cinder that brings our VMware benefits into an OpenStack environment. And why is that important? Again, in conventional storage, you've got this messy connection between the LUNs and volumes that are on the arrays that you're using for your primary storage and the hypervisors. And Cinder does a lot to simplify the connection from an API standpoint from the hypervisor management or the cloud management system to Cinder. But underneath the covers, the array is still using LUNs and volumes. It's still complex. You're having those unpredictable, noisy neighbor effects. And what Tintree does is really finish that alignment at the per VM level all the way through from OpenStack at the management level through Cinder down to the storage objects as they're being managed. And this gives you some really great um, benefits in terms of out of the box uh, performance uh, isolation, being able to see latency end to end from the hypervisor through the network, through the storage, and even um, looking at that over time. We all know that cloud instances are not as disposable as we would like them to be. And so we're being asked to troubleshoot uh, problems with virtual machines, we can give you full latency views of everything that's on a VM because we're capturing everything and doing everything at the VM level. And finally, of, of extreme importance in, in private cloud use cases is this concept of a, a true VM level QoS, where every VM down to its VMDK objects or its QCOW objects are being scheduled at a, at a per VM level and this allows you to set true tiers of service to guarantee performance. So in a private cloud environment, having users be able to choose a tier of storage where they have a guaranteed max and min, um, a gold, silver, or platinum um, tier of service, providing some visual updates in terms of what is the right uh, policy for a particular VM. And as a cloud service provider, um, being able to see the components of latency, including the effects of a particular QoS policy. So you know if a VM is suffering performance issues, is it due to it being on a, a level of, of storage performance that's too low, say the bronze level of service? Um, or is it a different issue in the environment that needs to be troubleshooted? And we give this, this benefit to all of our customers in terms of, um, in terms of that visibility. Um, We've been doing this for four years with traditional virtualized environments, and we're bringing all of this technology to OpenStack. So without further ado, and uh, 
Um, just to, as a reminder, we will be doing a raffle um, for a drone at the end of the presentation. So if you haven't entered already, uh, Monica and her team are uh, collecting those entries. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Chris to actually show you uh, Tintree and Cinder integration. All righty. Thanks, Chuck. Um, so let's actually uh, see some of this in action. Um, Got uh, a couple things pulled up right here. Um, what we're looking at here is the, the Tintree native interface uh, for one of our VM store appliances. Uh, we actually have it set up as a data store for this Rail OSP6 instance. And uh, what I wanted to do is just uh, kick off a, a new instance. And we're going to see how that flows through, uses our Cinder driver, and then we can actually see that, that instance natively at a storage level on, on our appliance. Uh, so let's say we're, uh, everybody should be getting excited about the drone, so let's call this drone. Uh, we're going to, let's just create one of them. Uh, and one of the nice things we're able to do is we can be a back-end storage source for both Glance and Cinder and Nova. So when we create this image, we're actually making a file system local copy. Uh, and that means that we can do those uh, copy operations very quickly. So uh, that's... We're, we're just doing a single instance in this case, but you could provision many instances very rapidly, and we're offloading those at the file system level. Um, let's select our CentOS image, and we'll hit launch and uh, cross our fingers here. Um, and so on the back end, uh, that's provisioning right now. Uh, we can see the volume associated with it right over here. And I'm going to switch to the, uh, the admin view uh, so we can actually see the driver. Oh, sorry. Uh, see the actual driver that was used um, to, to create the, the sender volume. Uh, so let's, uh, you can see here we had some previous uh, volumes that were created with the NFS driver. The one we just created was uh, use the sender, uh, the Tentry sender driver. Um, and so if we jump back over here to uh, the, the uh, Tentry interface, uh, we can see directly on the storage side, we have a view of each VM that's stored on us or instance that's stored on us as this data store. Uh, we can do that for uh, OpenStack, VMware environments, Hyper-V, Rev KVM, uh, and we can do those all at the same time. So uh, if we refresh our view here, uh, we should see our new VM. Uh, give that a second. The suspense of live demos. I, I know, it's always fun. Um, wh while that's refreshing here, I just want to show another example. Uh, we have uh, quite a few more systems uh, loaded up on this environment. Um, when we connect uh, a VM store appliance to an OpenStack environment, the integration really couldn't be simpler. Uh, you, all you do is basically give us a, a way to connect into your environment. You give us a keystone. Uh, endpoint and credentials tell us what mount point within the Tintry file system you're going to be deploying those uh, those volumes to, and you tell us what region we're a part of. And that's all we need. And so you can see we're actually simultaneously connected to two totally separate uh, OpenStack environments, uh, and simultaneously we're also connected to uh, a, a vCenter environment. So uh, if you're transitioning from a, a virtualization environment to a cloud environment, we can be kind of a, a platform to help you make that transition from a storage standpoint. Um, so let's see if our, uh, our new VM is here. So we can see it right there. Uh, we, we saw those files in our file system. We made a call back into Nova to find out what, that, those, uh, what VM those files corresponded to. And from this point forward, you'll be able to manage storage for this instance uh, as a VM, not, not in terms of LUNs or blocks uh, or, or files. We, we do that management at the VM level. Um, so what can we do with that? So uh, on the system, we've got a few more uh, uh, volumes and instances provisioned. Uh, we can actually see what are the uh, highest IOPS instances in the environment. Um, we could actually pull up uh, graphs of visualizations of the storage for individual VMs. Uh, we can do the same thing. We can look into performance for individual volumes. Uh, we could actually even apply QoS at a VM level. Uh, so pull up this guy doing about um, 2,200 IOPS. And if we actually drop into this QoS mode, we can see uh, that this, this particular VM doesn't have any QoS thresholds configured. Uh, if we want to, we could drop him down to, say, 1,500 IOPS. Oh, not 1,000. 
And so as soon as we do that, we, we actually see these sliders appear. So uh, very easily, we can set the, the min and max IOPS at a level that makes sense for that VM. So you're not sort of blindly setting these levels without knowing what effect that's going to have on the VM. Uh, and if we look at what effect that has on latency, we'll actually see that um, the throttle latency that we inject to modify the, the storage IOPS, if, if your VM is bursting above that max, we actually have to slow him down by adding latency artificially. Um, so what you'll see uh, is that, that uh, the IOPS are coming down and the throttle latency is going to be coming up. Uh, so we're bringing that VM into compliance with, with the max IOPS levels that we set. Uh, and we can actually look at that kind of, uh, give you deeper visibility into what's going on with your storage uh, all the way up at the array level. Um, so what we're seeing here is a visualization of latency across the whole array. And you can notice uh, we've got a, a huge spike here. Uh, we can actually drill down into any point in the graph. You can say if you're having latency two days ago, you can find that point in time. And we'll actually tell you what instance or what VM was causing that latency at that time. And we'll break it down into latency coming from the host, coming from the network, coming from array level contention, the flash, or the disk within the array. So really giving you a lot of visibility. Um, we're excited to be uh, working with the OpenStack community and bringing a lot of this uh, the visibility into the storage level into larger, higher scale environments in OpenStack. Great. And without further ado, I think we've got a drone to give away. Yes, we do. Um, so let's just pull that up real quick. Any, any last entries before uh, we do the drawing? Y your chances of winning a drone are, are very high right now. Half the people in the audience are, are Tentry employees, and they're not eligible. Yeah. A couple oh. more are coming. Almost there. All right. Um, are there any questions from uh, the audience members about anything that we talked about? The, the Tintry VM store, the per VM uh, performance and management capabilities that we offer, or anything we're doing in OpenStack? All right. We're just here for the drones, and that's OK. <laughs> I got a prop. Oh. oh, good. It was supposed to be red, but I think this one is green. All right. Do you want to do the honors? Uh, sure, yes. Drum roll, All right. please. That's... All right. Um, we have Jason Baker. Jason Baker. All right. Come on up. The drone is yours. Great. All right. We, we're going to take a picture right here. If you don't mind. If you don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> He's quicker on the draw. You get it? Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good show, everyone. <laughs> 